I'm Elizabeth Vargas. I'm John Stoss. And I'm Barbara Walters. And this is 2020. Tonight, we're doing your dirty work. From your private places to public spaces, getting to the bottom of 12 myths about germs. Don't sit on the toilet seat. Is she right? Do flu shots really keep the flu away? And is soap soap? Or is antibacterial better? Then we discover the truth about mouthwash. Does mouthwash eliminate bad breath? And is kissing your dog safer than kissing your date? I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. We're exposing you to an hour of facts about germs. The Dirty Dozen. Myths, lies, and straight talk. Plus, he sits on more oil than any ruler in the world. Could he stop the soaring prices at the pump? Barbara Walters in Saudi Arabia. The very first interview with a new king, careful to weigh his words about women and the price of gas. Is there anything that Saudi Arabia can do now to keep prices down? First and exclusive, the king speaks. <laughs> From ABC News headquarters in New York, John Stossel and Elizabeth Vargas. Good evening and welcome to 2020. You can't see them, but they're everywhere. We live in a world full of germs and some of them do nasty things to us. So tonight we're investigating myths about germs, what we call the dirty dozen. 12 things you've been told about germs. What's true and what's not? And with the flu season upon us, we begin with something that's on everyone's mind right now, the flu vaccine. Should you get that shot? Number 12 on our Dirty Dozen list sounds like a no-brainer. Flu shots keep the flu away. But is it true? Every year, more than 36,000 Americans die from it. 200,000 will be hospitalized. And 30 to 50 million adults and children will get it. It is influenza, the flu, and it is caused by a virus. <laughs> Each year, the question for scientists is, which virus, and will taking a flu vaccine prevent you from getting it? It absolutely protects you. Dr. Uh, William Schaffner of Vanderbilt Medical School is a leading expert on infectious diseases. He says there is no universal vaccine that will protect you from the flu. Each year, health officials determine months ahead of the winter flu season which three viral strains will likely affect the most people. And then we create a vaccine to protect against what we anticipate will be the problem. There are places all around the world that are constantly culturing people, taking specimens from people, and testing them for influenza. What happens if the fourth strain happens to break out? Then my vaccine doesn't do me any good. Yes and no. Uh, it is a bit of a gamble. We do our best to match up what's in the vaccine with the anticipated strain, and then every once in a while, we get a new strain that tries to take over. But unlike vaccines for polio and the measles, which are nearly 100% effective, the flu vaccine is 70 to 90% effective in preventing illness. The stronger and younger you are, the more effective the vaccine is because your immune system is more robust. The most important question to ask is, is it good for you as an individual and is it good for the public health? And I think the answer there is a resounding yes. Dr. Harvey Rubin is professor of medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Another common myth is that you'll get the flu by getting the flu shot. You won't get the flu by getting the flu shot. Another common myth is that um, you, there are very serious side effects. Um, there are very, very few side effects of the, of the flu shot. We keep hearing about doctors monitoring, especially Asia for influenza strains. The really new strains of influenza have traditionally come out of Asia. And the reason is that you have so many people so close to so many birds and so many pigs. And the influenza viruses move from the birds to the pigs to the humans and get together. And that's been kind of the, uh, the origin of new strains. This year's vaccine will not protect you from the strain that everyone is watching, H5N1, or the deadly bird flu. There are only about 100 cases of it passing from birds to humans, but it could create a pandemic, killing millions worldwide, if the virus mutates into a form easily passed from human to human. How likely is it that the bird flu could break out this winter? Well, to quote a friend of mine, he said, we know the pandemic clock is ticking, but we don't know what time it is. 
But if you had to handicap, what are the odds that we'll see the bird flu break out into a human population this winter? I think the chances of, of a mutation occurring this winter are very small. Not zero, but very small. We're really not prepared for the magnitude of what could happen if, if it happened this winter. But don't forget the H5N1, that avian strain has been around since 97. And fortunately it hasn't spread human to human yet. But it may be only a matter of time. Now, we check out the two places where you spend most of your waking hours, the kitchen and the office. Are you ever so busy at work that you eat at your desk? It's safe to eat lunch at your desk, right? Don Daler investigates myth number 11. The results are surprising. Every day on the way to work, we run the risk of coming into contact with people who are sick or carrying germs that can make us sick. So when we finally get there, we're relieved. So what if our offices may not always be neat? Here's my lowly office, so tell me. They're clean, right? So most people won't do anything to their desk until they start sticking to it. In fact, we find 400 times more bacteria on a desktop than we do most toilet seats. Working most Dr. Charles Gerba is a microbiologist who's done hundreds of studies on germs. Your uh, keyboard, your mouse, your phone, and your desktop are going to be really bad. Part of the problem, many of us eat at our desks. Can we take a look at your keyboard and sure. see, just see? To show just how germy my desk is, Dr. Gerba okay. takes out his handy-dandy germ counter. 4.2 is about uh, 2 million bacteria. You're equal to a faucet handle in a public restroom. Great! That means eating at my desk is like having a sandwich in the men's room. This is what most of us imagine happens to our offices at night. But the reality is, cleaning crews are often not allowed to even wipe down your desk. Because they cannot clean your personal space. So to find out how to make our offices less germ-friendly, we called on Allison Jantz, co-author with Dr. Gerber of a new book, The Germ Freak's Guide to Outwitting Colds and Flu. You don't have to overhaul your whole lifestyle. You can make changes that take minutes a day that can really improve your health. I would go in this door so I don't have to open this. Allison's advice, wash your hands, of course, and avoid touching things a lot of other people have touched. Elevator buttons. I just do them with my elbow. The office snack room. I mean, the microwave handle is one of the germiest places in your whole workplace. Even the water fountain. I avoid these like the plague. She also says, when in doubt, disinfect. All of the phone. And I would do the keypad as well. But Allison, how many people really are going to go to this trouble when they just need well, to use a phone in an office place? But what's the trouble? It says, what, 30 seconds? A lot of people just surf the internet for those 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm just cleaning the phone. Um, it may seem extreme, but studies show billions of dollars in productivity yeah, are lost good. each year because of germs we catch and pass on in the office. And consider this, since Allison launched her anti-germ campaign three years ago, not one person in her family has gotten sick. Now to the heart of your home and myth number 10. You might think the kitchen is the cleanest room in the house because you're constantly wiping up after everyone. But how clean is it? Here's Lynn Schur. Remember this scene from Jurassic Park? Where two deadly raptors terrorize the kitchen? Well, if you think that's scary, wait till you hear what's lurking in your own kitchen. Salmonella, E. coli, Listeria monocytogenes, Campylobacter. Dr. Philip Tierno, a microbiologist at New York University, wrote The Secret Life of Germs. I think the kitchen can be the deadliest room in the house. That's because it's the perfect environment for germs. For instance, Grandma always said, let hot food cool down before popping it in the refrigerator. That's the myth. False. Bacteria grow from about 45 degrees to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That means the quicker you can cool down the food stuff, the better off you are. Sharon Frank, food appliances director at Good Housekeeping, agrees. What we would suggest is that you ladle it into smaller containers, because it's going to cool down much more quickly in smaller containers than in this big container. What about the concept that you want the flavors to sort of get in there a little bit better, so you want it to just sit? I think that's a myth. It's going to, the flavors are going to meld even in the refrigerator, and I think that's why leftovers taste so good sometimes. 
we have another myth. A sponge is the perfect way to keep your kitchen clean. That's false. It's very easy to take that bacteria that's in a sponge and then recontaminate other areas of the kitchen. Precisely the point of this graphic commercial for Lysol. But if you're cleaning them with an overused sponge, you might as well be doing this. In fact, the sponge or dish rag equivalent of a sponge is the dirtiest individual item in a home. Exhibit A. I actually brought in my sponges from home. Um, I prefer not to touch it. Uh, you, don't, <laughs> you don't want to touch my sponges? Nope. So how exactly do you make a sponge worthy? A mild bleach solution, one ounce to a quart of water. And then you really should let it stand for about 10 minutes to make sure that you've really killed your bacteria. Should one wash a sponge every single time you use it? Every single time you handle food stuff, that sponge should be sanitized. A lot of folks put a sponge in the dishwasher to disinfect it. Does that work? Uh, it's good unless you're very frugal and you decided to bring down the, the hot water level, which many people do. So stick to the bleach, or you might want to eat in another room. If a carrot dropped in a toilet or dropped in my sink where I have my sponge, I'd rather eat the carrot from the toilet than from the sink. And speaking of carrots, they're often served with dip. Which brings us to number nine in our Dirty Dozen list. Do you think it's safe to dip your carrot or your chip in the dip at a party? We'll dip into that one when we come back. It's frustrating. Just when you're ready to relax, you feel the compelling urge to move, along with hard to describe sensations in your legs. They can even keep you from getting to sleep. It's called Restless Leg Syndrome, or RLS, a recognized medical condition. And now, for many, there's relief. Requip, the first and only FDA-approved prescription medication for Restless Leg Syndrome. Requip helps relieve the symptoms of RLS. It can help you make peace with your legs. Requip may cause you to fall asleep or feel very sleepy during normal activities such as driving or to faint or feel dizzy when you stand up. Tell your doctor if you experience these problems or if you drink alcohol or are taking medicines that make you drowsy. Side effects include nausea, drowsiness, vomiting, and dizziness. Most patients were not bothered enough to stop taking Requip. It's good to get comfortable again. Ask your doctor about restless leg syndrome and if Requip is right for you and help put RLS to rest. Walt Disney's greatest fairy tale, Cinderella, is now the number one DVD in America. Oh, my goodness. Critics say it's the perfect fit for everyone. Now brilliantly restored. Don't miss your chance to own Cinderella Special Edition on Disney DVD today. When we built the new Explorer, we gave it innovations like a more powerful engine that uses less fuel. Then, we set out to break the sound barrier. The 2006 Explorer, the most powerful one yet. As quiet as a luxury car. The best Explorer ever. Zataran's ready to serve. Authentic New Orleans dishes that go from pantry to plate in just 60 seconds. For those times when you need a great meal fast. Zataran's to the rescue. Jazz it up with Zataran's ready to serve. Trouble making it to the gym? Go with a friend. <laughs> Elmo's musical Peekaboo Gym has everything for a great workout. Peekaboo, baby. One, two, three. And as baby grows, this gym rises to the challenge with a crew of personal trainers. Mm, numbers are yummy. And over 40 songs, phrases, and sounds. Sing it again. Elmo's musical Peekaboo Gym, the friendliest gym in town, only from Fisher Price. I didn't know she was ill. I didn't know. Jenny was 21 years old when she died. I don't think there's any way to explain what it feels like to lose a child. I would have rather die. I'd give anything to have my daughter back. Anything. My life. Learn and live. Contact the American Heart Association today. 
Camps for special kids created by a loving family. They went without a paycheck so they could get this camp running. Now we'll build them a new home and a new camp. A two-hour Extreme Makeover Home Edition. All new Sunday, 7, 6 Central, only on ABC. In time for the weekend, the facts about myth number nine, it's okay to dip your chip at a party. Our experts said it's actually risky because some people double dip. If they have a bug, dipping and re-dipping can spread infected saliva. So everyone should spoon some dip onto a plate and dip into your own germs. And if you want to look good for that party, you might be out trying and buying makeup. But myth number eight says keep your makeup to yourself. What's wrong with sharing? Deborah Roberts finds out. Which blush do you think? <gasps> Kristen and Natasha, like lots of women, are makeup junkies. But while getting pretty, they might be dipping into something pretty ugly. Lots of bacteria. I think the risk is real for bacterial conjunctivitis. All from using makeup contaminated by consumers. Elizabeth Brooks, a biology professor at Rowan University, made the surprising discovery after testing hundreds of makeup samples. We found many, many colonies of Staphylococcus, colonies of Streptococcus, and E. coli. Ew. That's right, E. coli. That derives from, what, fecal matter, right? Absolutely. There is no other cause for E. coli but fecal contaminants. Who's most to blame here? Is this the cosmetic company, or is this the... The consumer. It's definitely the consumer here. There are women out there walking around without washing their hands. So, Dr. Brooks says, don't try samples on your mouth or eyes. They're points of entry for bacteria. But if you can't resist the makeup counter, ask for single-use samples. Have lipsticks dipped in alcohol. Wiping off with the tissue isn't enough. And avoid the counters on the weekends when traffic is heaviest. The highest count, no question, 100% contamination, was for that Saturday afternoon, Saturday evenings. Yeah. We thought we were just shopping for makeup. That's, yeah, that's pretty scary. Now we know. On to myth number seven. Mouthwash cures bad breath. Bill Ritter sniffed out the facts. Excuse me, you wouldn't have never breath mint, would you? Actually, I do. It's in my purse. Well, pop it! It's not doing you any good in there! It may be the yuckiest of the personal hygiene no-nos, but the truth is we've all had bad breath. So much so, it's a frequent theme in American pop culture. Good morning. Morning breath is definitely the worst. So we talked to an expert on the germs that cause bad breath. New York University professor Philip Tierno says most bad breath comes from bad dental care. When you get a concentration of bacteria producing malodorous chemicals, coming from the lack of oral hygiene. It has the equivalent odor of feces. Oh, and isn't that a charming notion? But that's why we brush, and that's why we floss, and that's why so many of us use this stuff, mouthwash. Now, it does kill germs, but there's also a dirty little secret about mouthwash. Does mouthwash eliminate bad breath, fact or myth? Myth. Why? It does not. Why? Most mouthwashes contain a, an alcoholic base that does reduce the bacterial count, but it does not eliminate the causes of bad breath. It works at first, but then the bad news. According to many experts, the bad breath you wanted to prevent gets even worse. You have no salivation. Dry mouth will give you a bad odor. That tingling feeling goes away so quickly, and it leaves behind beautiful home for bacteria to grow even faster. Exactly. And that's one reason babies typically don't have bad breath. They produce lots of saliva, which is nature's way of protecting us from having bad breath. If it's good enough for babies, it's good enough for the rest of us. Keeping the mouth moist, says Dr. Tierno, is the key to fresh breath. The companies that produce alcohol-based mouthwashes insist their products are proven to work effectively. Scope and Lavoris also say they have low amounts of alcohol. Listerine, which has up to 27% alcohol, sent us this statement saying it has a study proving that Listerine actually increases the flow of saliva. All that is counter to Dr. Tierno's theory. Now, he says one of the best remedies for bad breath is to floss your teeth to get rid of the meat fibers in between the teeth. That does more 
than using mouthwash. As other alternatives, Tierno suggests mouthwashes without alcohol and water. Keep your mouth moist by drinking lots of it. You constantly flush the bacteria down. And just like your mom always told you, brush for at least two minutes, including brushing your tongue and floss as well. But if these helpful hints don't stop your bad breath, then you might want to see a doctor because frankly, your problem may be beyond the scope of our story. Fresh breath, another reason to drink lots of water. And if you do, should you keep reusing your water bottle? So many people do that, never worrying about germs, but should they? That's myth number six when we come back. Rams, Colts, Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. Why do we love going out to eat? Being together with friends? Our favorite dishes? Yes. Introducing new Corner Bistro from Stouffer's. Restaurant-inspired entrees you can now enjoy at home. Try our full menu of new Corner Bistro entrees and see what's cooking at Stouffer's. Oh, wrap those arms around me. Oh, yes. Yes, I want to feel your warmth. Dreaming about a new coat? Don't even dream about paying department store prices. Burlington Coat Factory's pre-winter savings event has all top quality designer label coats, jackets, and leathers, all up to 60% off department store prices. She looks so peaceful when she's shopping. Burlington Coat Factory. Love coats, love labels, you'll love our prices. Turn off the Ambilight function on your Philips flat TV, and it's like going back in time. The only flat TV with Ambilight from Philips. You'll never go back to ordinary TV. My dearest Lisa, as we enter our first day apart, I already miss you terribly. Believe me, honey, <laughs> it's no picnic out here. But don't you worry about me. Somehow, I'll get through it. And know in your heart, I will see you soon. Though, I just can't say when. Patrick. You'll find it hard to come back. The 244 horsepower pilot from Honda. If you were my sister, I would say you should know your breast cancer could come back. You should know how to fight it. You should know there are treatments that can help reduce that risk significantly. Learn about those treatments, I would say. Decide on them with your doctor. If you were my sister, I would say you, you should, should know, know you have, have options. options. If you were my sister, I would say there are many reasons to be optimistic. Fifteen years, I'm still here. Hello? Hi, Smith from Archives. Uh, we've got a little problem that I think you as the head of HR need to know about. It's called Johnson, and it needs to go bye-bye. This gentleman refuses to leave. <laughs> He's a troublemaker that needs to be... Kellogg's Toasted Honey Crunch. So crunchy, so honey, so clustery, so good. You're in on it, aren't you? Kellogg's Toasted Honey Crunch. Sounds good. Sunday on ABC. The one night America can't wait to watch. At 9, 8 central. We don't have to be casual anymore. I can be naked in 20 seconds. Why, you conniving little shrew. I don't know why we're not closer. An all-new Desperate Housewives. And at 10, 9 central. I don't need complicated. I have complicated all on my own. Divorce papers. If you sign, I'll sign and be on the first plane out of here. An all-new Grey's Anatomy. Sunday starting at 9, 8 central. Only on ABC. 2020 continues with myths, lies, and straight talk. We're halfway through our dirty dozen at myth number six. You can reuse your water bottle. Here's what our experts say. Reused water bottles do collect bacteria, but as long as you don't share the bottle, you're fine because it's only your germs. However, the bottles with those push-up tops should not be reused because bacteria from your hands will end up in your mouth. Okay, on to myth number five. 
most travelers swear airplane air makes you sick. And after the flight, you might get sick, but was it the air? Dr. Tim Johnson checked it out. Your plane starts to taxi away from the gate, and the open air nozzles above your seat start blowing out cool air. As you sit back and head up into the sky, do you wonder, is that recycled air blowing germs down on me? If so, you're not alone. I definitely think that airplane air can make me feel sick. I often get a cold after I fly. When I get off of the flights, I'm normally congested and I have to use my inhalers. And I don't believe airplane uh, air is conditioned the way it should be. But experts say, don't blame the air up there. The air is, in fact, quite healthy because of the excellent cabin air filters. Joe Lundquist is an air filtration expert. He says state-of-the-art HEPA air filters can capture up to 99.9% .9 of small bacteria and viruses, even SARS and bird flu viruses. We've gone through great studies to prove that they effectively remove the bacteria and viruses that people are so concerned about. Today, HEPA filters are found on most commercial airplanes where they recirculate the air every three to five minutes. A 2002 medical study found that passengers flying in planes with recirculated air had no more colds than people on planes ventilated with fresh air. So, how did you catch that cold on the plane? <coughs> That's how it happens. Just being on a plane packed with people is the reason you catch colds. In fact, that air blowing on you from the nozzles above may even help keep you safe from some of those germs being coughed up all around you. Myth number four is about another place you share with strangers, public restrooms. Most of us assume the toilet seat is the dirtiest thing in the bathroom, and we ladies will do anything to avoid it. But how dirty is it? Juju Chang gets to the bottom of this one. Few inanimate objects arouse as much universal germ fear, especially among women, as the dreaded public toilet seat. That's like the first rule. Don't sit on the toilet seat. I'm traumatized by toilet seats. They're nasty and they're filthy. 50% of American women won't sit on a seat without some type of guard or without hovering. And it's like, we are humans, not hovercrafts. Author Allison Chance spent years herself dangling over toilet seats. But now, even this self-professed germ freak says those paper toilet shields only help psychologically. They're basically worthless. But everybody's mother says, don't sit on the toilet they seat. They do. They do. Is that the biggest source of germs? No. No. You're not going to get germs from your backside. You're going to get them from your hands. So if that's true, where are the hot spots in a bathroom? We turn to Allison's co-author, microbiologist Dr. Charles Gerba, to test our 2020 bathroom with his germ meter. Usually, actually, the floor is the dirtiest, uh, as you might guess. The floor is filthy, registering about 2 million bacteria per square inch. Dr. Gerba says that's about 200 times higher than a sanitary surface. Oh, this is pretty bad, yeah. And not surprisingly, the sanitary napkin disposal also fails the test. It's worse than the floor. Failed. Okay, this is pretty bad, too. This is... But you won't believe what Dr. Gerba measures on our toilet seat. One pants. This is the cleanest spot so far. This is the cleanest. Then again, what looks clean may not be. While the men's room seems messier and smells worse, the ladies' room actually harbors twice as much bacteria. There's probably more bacteria in a women's room because they spend longer time there and also they bring in small children. With their dirty diapers and germy fingers. So how do you avoid those germs? First, when it's time to go, go for the first stall. It's used the least, so it's the cleanest. And ladies, never put your bags on the floor. We found fecal bacteria in about 30% of the bottom of women's purses. So you may be moving bacteria from the bottom of the restroom floor to the maybe the kitchen sink area where you're going to make lunch. Another tip, skip the so-called sanitary hand dryer. We actually end up with uh, more bacteria with the hand blower because they're taking the air in the restroom and blowing it out of your hand with the bacteria on it. Great. But once your hands are clean, there's no need to worry about the door handle. Really, the cleanest areas in the bathroom are actually uh, the door handle and the toilet seat. The two places that people fear the most. Right, yeah, are the cleanest. Probably because they fear them so much. 
when 2020 returns. I love you, I love you. Smooching your pooch, should you? A dog's mouth is cleaner than a human. Is she right? That's myth number two in our Dirty Dozen, next. It's Sears Days. And the lowest prices of the season are happening right now. Store-wide. So go ahead. Get two. Sears Days. It only happens twice a year. What if the air were clean again? Would the grass be greener? longer feel better what if all cars released 80% fewer smog forming emissions hybrid synergy drive from Toyota the power to move forward technology has made your morning easier why not your shave the new Philips Norelco Smart Touch XL is designed to shave more with every touch, with three shaving rings in each shaving head. And because now it pivots to stay on your face and neck, even tricky hairs are cut. Make every stroke count. Philips Norelco. ABC Tuesday. You saw Oprah in a coffee shop? Yeah. That's like seeing... Bigger than Oprah. What a story. You gotta come up with something that's gonna top that. There's no top in Oprah. What a lie. This humble, humble man saved my life. You ran into a burning building. Well, I had to. What could possibly happen next? Drive, Jim. Drive like the wind. Jim Belushi, Courtney Thorne Smith, an explosive all new Jim, Tuesday at 8 7 Central, followed by an all new Rodney, only on ABC. We've reached the final three in our countdown of myths about germs. Number three, soap is soap. Well, isn't it? Actually, many people worried about getting sick by antibacterial soap. It may cost more, but for years, the ads have said it's better. You got kids, you got germs. You need a soap that's made to kill germs. Sounds good, and people believe. Especially during cold and flu season, I just like to make sure that I'm killing the bacteria. <laughs> That's the whole purpose of it being antibacterial. It's supposed to work harder for you, right? But does it really make a difference? We followed some people who get their hands very dirty. Workers at New York's Staten Island Zoo. Here he comes back. Good girl. Microbiologist Christine Ginocchio took samples of what was on the worker's hand. You're just going to touch it to the plate, put it flat, and lift it up. OK. You're going to turn the faucet on. Then she gave them a lesson on hand-washing technique. So you want to wash your hands for 30 seconds. And what Do you people want really need a lesson in sure. hand-washing? And don't be afraid to use a good amount of soap. Yes, say you microbiologists, because few of us do it right. You want to make sure that you really, really lather up the soap. And you want to use a lot of friction, because friction... The friction gets rid of the dead skin and dirt skin that harbors and germs. And then you're going to rinse thoroughly. Then rinse well, and this part kills me because she's wasting water. Dry your hands and don't touch any part of the sink with your clean hands. You're going to use your paper towels to turn off your faucet. Then the workers washed. Half used ordinary soap and the other half used Dial Antibacterial, the best seller. We took a sample of what was now on their hands and allowed the bacteria to grow for three days. The majority of the bacteria is what we call transient bacteria that you pick up when you touch different surfaces in the environment. Here's what an unwashed hand did to the Petri dish. But after washing, an unscientific comparison showed both the antibacterial and the regular soap did a good job killing bacteria. Maybe a little bit more with the antibacterial in this one group versus with the non. In other words, even if your workplace is a zoo, just washing your hands well will do a lot. Now, antibacterials can kill more germs for a longer time, which is why they're useful in hospitals. But they have no effect on viruses. And will they keep your family from getting sick? Dial says they'll help. But Columbia University researchers once studied hundreds of households, some of which used antibacterial products, others which didn't. 
they found no difference in coughs, runny noses, sore throats, and other illnesses. The most important thing is simply really, really good hand washing, independent of the type of soap that you might use. But that raises the question, do people wash? <laughs> Jerry! This sitcom portrayed what happens more often than we'd like to think. I'm personally going to prepare the dinner for you and the Audrey. A recent nationwide survey found 25% of men don't wash their hands after using public restrooms. Women do better, only 10% of them don't wash. We ran our own test at this restaurant where the sink is out in the hall. So what would happen? Would most people wash their hands? I hope so. Well, most did, fortunately. But a third of the men coming out of the bathroom walked right past the sink. Not good for them. Not good for you. <laughs> and now on to myth number two. A dog's mouth is cleaner than yours. Dog lovers believe it, but is it true? Deborah Roberts checks it out. <laughs> Rowan and Riley Paul are like pet lovers everywhere. They can't get enough affection from their dog, Ginger. When she wakes you up in the morning, oh. like when you're sleeping, she goes up. Give daddy kisses now. Oh, there you go. And if licking is loving, dog owners seem to get lots of it. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you. But what if you're like Charlie Brown's friend Lucy? Ugh, I've been kissed by a dog. I have dog germs. Get hot water, get some disinfectant, get some iodine. Maybe she's on to something. Have you seen the places dogs put their mouths? But there is the old adage. A dog's mouth is cleaner than a human. Lots of people think that's true. Their saliva is much cleaner, and if you have a cut or, a cut or anything, if they lick it, it's a healing fact. It's like a septic. Really? We asked veterinarian and fellow dog lover Marty Becker, author of Chicken Soup for the Dog Owner Soul. Well, they lick their privates, they raid the garbage can. You know, we give each other a peck on the cheek when we say hello, they give each other a peck on the rear end. I mean, all you got to do is look, watch, smell, and you'll realize that that is not true. So where did this idea come from that dogs' mouths are cleaner than humans? The dog will have a wound, and they'll be licking that wound, and you'll notice that the wound heals very fast. But what that tongue does is it gets rid of the dead tissue, just like a surgeon would debride a wound to get down to healthy tissue. And also the licking action stimulates circulation. And there's another reason people believe the myth. The bacteria that's in a dog's mouth, they're species-specific, so a staph or a strep for a human is not transmissible to a dog if you were to kiss it and vice versa. The bottom line is you're more likely to get a serious illness from kissing a person than kissing a dog. I like you, but no licking in the mouth. I'm sorry. But since dogs do transmit some germs, Dr. Becker has advice. Keep the vaccines current, good external parasite control, good internal parasite control, you're gonna be good to go. And then kiss all you want. Kiss all you want. Good news for dog lovers. Hey, buddy. You come home and you're a rock star. They love you and they race to greet you. You're not going to go home and see the dog's suitcases are packed. <laughs> they love us unconditionally. They make us laugh. And you know what? If we're going to give them a little kiss to thank them for that, that's right. good by me. You pee on me. That's okay. 2020 continues with The Dirty Dozen after this from our ABC stations. Coming up on KV Local News at 11. I know it's making history. You know, we're making history and, and bringing another publication to the Tri-Cities. The people have, have are it's something new to talk about. Tonight, there's more competition for news in the Tri-Cities. Horizon Air makes getting over the mountains cheaper. And the Benton Franklin Health District starts giving flu shots next week. But they're not for everybody. We'll see you tonight at 11 o'clock. Tonight, only at 11. KV ABC. A message from the Secretary of State. Across Washington and counties large and small, you have an opportunity to vote and be heard. To protect this important right, new state and federal voter reforms are in place. So make sure you register on time. Bring valid ID to the polls, because voter ID is now required to protect legitimate votes and prevent duplicates and errors. And follow the directions carefully on your ballot. Learn more at vote.wa.gov. Your vote is your voice. Be heard November 8th. 
It's Macy's Opportunity Days with sensational savings for every room. Plus, earn ten opportunity dollars for every one hundred dollars you charge. Now through Monday. Two years ago, a surgical team set my throat on fire while I was under anesthesia. I've had eighteen surgeries just so I can breathe. If I three thirty passed, the three hundred fifty thousand dollar gap would even apply to someone like me. There would be no exception, even though I have to live like this. The truth is in the fine print. Vote no on I-330. Paid for by no on I-330. The line for flu shots starts on Monday tonight. And now myth number one, and it's a serious one. Hospitals keep you safe from germs. That seems obvious until you hear the chilling facts. Again, here's Dr. Tim Johnson. There's a deadly threat hiding inside America's hospitals. What's even scarier, your hospital is probably keeping it a secret. I felt so betrayed by the hospital. Maureen Daly's mother was a healthy 63-year-old woman when she had surgery to fix a broken shoulder. But in the hospital, she got an infection that left her immobilized on a respirator. Maureen was told that life-threatening germs are an inevitable fact of hospital life. I cannot accept that it would be a fact of life that you can walk into a hospital with a broken shoulder and leave practically dead. Maureen's mother died four months later. It turns out that hospital infections are the fourth leading cause of death in the United States. These infections kill as many people each year in our country as AIDS, breast cancer and auto accidents combined. Why aren't hospitals doing more about it? It just seems a no-brainer that they should be very worried. Well, secrecy has allowed this problem to fester. Most states have not required hospitals to report their infections or provided that information to the public. Pennsylvania is one of only six states that has passed a law requiring the reporting of infections. Experts say that public disclosure forces hospitals to reduce infection rates. Dr. Rick Shannon, chief of medicine at Allegheny General Hospital in Pittsburgh, looked at the data on patients in the hospital's intensive care units. He was stunned. 51% of the people that got these infections died. Half the people that got one died. Dr. Shannon wasted no time. He gave an order to the ICU staff reduce hospital infections to zero in just 90 days. After he left, we shook our heads and we thought, is he not? <laughs> we thought he might be losing it a little bit and how are we going to do that? So. But after just one week, the ICU staff identified the problem. It wasn't a superbug, it was the staff. And they each had their own way of washing hands, changing dressings, and putting in catheters. No one actually knew what the right way to do it was. And not knowing what the right way was, all these little errors could creep in that would lead to an infection. And then the hand sanitizers, it couldn't be any closer to the door. Dr. Shannon and his team quickly found solutions, like putting in more hand sanitizers and raising the head of the bed 30 degrees to prevent pneumonia. The results were unbelievable. 90 days later, uh, we went from 49 infections to zero. Now, a year later, only one patient in the ICU has died from an infection. The public has a right to this information. If you're going into the hospital, you should be able to find out which hospital in your area has a serious infection problem so you can stay away from that hospital. And here's the single best thing you can do to keep yourself safe from dangerous germs in any hospital. Most important, ask doctors and nurses to clean their hands before touching you. If you're worried about being too aggressive, just remember your life is at stake. The last word on germs. Coming up next, something different and special. Barbara Walters with one of the most powerful men in the world. When 2020 returns, they're living rich on oil while you're getting poor at the pump. Can this man help? You're the king. Barbara Walters in Saudi Arabia with a world television first. Next.
our dinosaur from Fisher Price, where little hands make big things happen. Play, laugh, grow. Come to Priceline now for the best deals on airfare. Name your own price and save up to $100 off other leading travel sites on each ticket you buy. That's it. Only at the new Priceline. The nation's top critics are raving about good night and good luck. Rolling Stone calls it an electrifying movie event. The New York Times says, see it now. And Newsweek declares one of the best movies of the year. Good night and good luck. Rated PG. Now playing select cities. Monday, anorexia in women. It's not just teenage girls anymore. It takes a very short time to take over your life. The pressures on middle-aged women putting more and more at risk. Is someone you know in trouble? Watch World News tonight. And Thursday, Primetime's cameras take you inside a part of the music industry you've never seen before. Beautiful twin girls who may look like the Olsen twins, but whose music may shock and disgust you. Is this the smiling, innocent new face of hate? Primetime gets it done Thursday. Biggest renovation yet. A two-hour extreme makeover home edition, ABC Sunday. On Tuesday's number one show. Does it get any bigger in this town than the state visit? The new president faces her biggest challenge. We have no room for error here. Every world leader is watching. But the secrets are even bigger. I want you to resign. You want her gone just as much as I do. Are you guys like allowed to have guests over? Do whatever I want. I don't think you know what you're getting yourself into. I know what I'm doing. If I say something, that's got to matter. Do you really want to get into this now? All new Commander in Chief, followed by an all new Boston Legal, Tuesday, 9, 8 Central, only on ABC. The prices are falling during the Tri-City's biggest annual automotive sales drive. The fourth annual Oktoberfest continues at McCurley Integrity Mazda. Get special Oktoberfest savings like over $4,200 off an 05 Mazda 6, $4,500 off a new 05 Mazda MPV. And don't forget to bring in your non-perishable food donations to any McCurley showroom. Don't miss out. Come test drive a new Mazda today during the fourth annual Oktoberfest sales drive going on now at McCurley Integrity Mazda in the Pasco Autoplex. Every physician in Washington State is impacted by the medical malpractice crisis. The impact of the current system is driving health care costs higher. The real issue is whether or not patients will have access to medical care when they need it. If we don't pass I-330, doctors are going to continue to leave the state. We're going to continue to have great difficulty recruiting new doctors into the state, and the patient access to care is going to become a greater and greater problem. Vote yes on I-330, no on I-336. Paid for by doctors, nurses, and patients for a healthy Washington. My favorite time of the year is when prices fall. It's time to rake in the savings at Furniture Row's fall clearance sale. We've taken huge markdowns in every store to clear out overstock, discontinued, and one-of-a-kind merchandise. And these extra discounts are on top of our 200% guaranteed lowest price pledge. We're also offering no payments and no interest for one year. Furniture Row Outlet. Drop by. Our fall clearance sale ends soon. In Yakima and Kennewick. Want to know what the stars have in store for you? Grab your cell phone and send a text message, sign 7, to number 43333, and get your personal horoscope daily on your cell phone. Grab your cell phone and send the text message, sign 7, to number 43333. All answers to your questions about love, money, relationships, and personal happiness are at your fingertips. Send the text message, sign 7, to number 43333, and find out daily what's written in the stars for you. 2020 continues with John Stossel and Barbara Walters. Now we're going to change direction and go to a country that has a big impact on our lives, Saudi Arabia. The country has a new king, and he's granted his first interview anywhere in the world to who else? My colleague, Barbara Walters. <laughs> well, Barbara? yes, he did, John. Let me tell you how come. I went to Saudi Arabia three years ago to do a special for 2020, and I met Abdullah, who was then the crown prince. I asked him to do an interview. He said no, but he said, if I ever do one, I will do it with you. Who knew he would remember? So last week, we flew to Saudi Arabia to meet with this new king, Abdullah, who kept his word. Hmm, a wonderful picture. In his early 80s, King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz is well into his senior years, yet he is widely considered to be a modern thinker, a reformer in a country long bound by ancient ideas. In each of his palaces, there is a whole wall full of televisions, 34 in this case, so the king can watch news from around the globe. 
Saudi Arabia is a country of contradictions. It's only 73 years old, and it's oil rich in trying to be modern. But it has its traditions. For example, I was told in order not to offend when I go out publicly to keep my head covered and wear a long robe called an abaya. The king is trying to make reform, but it is a delicate balance. Just two months into his reign, Abdullah is already bucking tradition, starting with the fact that in a country notorious for discrimination against women, he has chosen to do his first television interview as king with a woman, me. One of the reasons that I have made the decision to do this interview with you in particular is for that reason. But the king must tread gently to make change happen. Saudi Arabia's powerful religious conservatives want nothing to do with progressive thought. Abdullah, both as crown prince and now as king, seems to know that if he is to prevail, he must appeal directly to his people and also to his American friends. I understand that now that you are king, you prohibited your subjects from kissing your hand. Were you embarrassed to have your hand kissed? I have a tremendous distaste for such matters because I believe that one only bows before one's God, not before another human being. When you visited President Bush this past April, there were photographs of you and the president holding hands. This is not a gesture common among American men. Did it have significance? Yes, in our culture, holding hands is a sign of friendship and a sign of loyalty. And you do it with people dear to you. And President Bush is a friend whose friendship I value and treasure. Affection between leaders aside, the real treasure and the real bond in the relationship is oil. Saudi Arabia sits on one quarter of the world's supply. Americans are very concerned about the rising price of oil. In the past 10 years, the price of crude has tripled. Do you see the price of oil continuing to rise? God only knows. But we in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia don't accept these increases. Without a doubt, we have benefited financially, but we believe that the damage to other countries is tremendous, and we don't believe that the prices should be at these levels. Is there anything that Saudi Arabia can do now to keep prices down? We are trying, and we continue to try. We have increased our oil production to over 10 million barrels a day. And the plan is to increase it to 12 million barrels over the next four years. But the king says there is only so much Saudi Arabia can do. Prices are controlled by speculative markets, and competition from other markets, like China, is driving our prices up. The world's demand for oil does keep going up. There is concern that the Saudi oil fields may be running dry, may be peaking. Are you concerned about that? According to the scientists and the geologists and the experts in this area, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's reserves are sufficient to provide supplies for longer than 60 or 70 years. And after that, just how this desert kingdom will support itself isn't known. For now, the money flows to the fortunate. A walk in any nice mall in Saudi Arabia is like a stroll down Fifth Avenue in New York, except for the fact that the women who buy these sexy clothes can only wear them at home or under their abayas. Which brings us to the ever-present question of women's rights. A flashpoint for Westerners is that Saudi Arabia is the only country in the world in which women are not allowed to drive. It seems to be symbolic of a woman's lack of independence. Would you support allowing women to drive? I believe strongly in the rights of women. My mother is a woman, my sister is a woman, my daughter is a woman, my wife is a woman. I believe the day will come when women drive. In fact, if you look at, uh, at the areas in Saudi Arabia, the desert, and in the rural areas, you will find that women do drive. The issue will require patience. In time, I believe it will be possible. And I believe patience is a virtue. You cannot just de make a decree that women drive. You're the king. I value and take care of my people as I would my eye. Is that an answer? Yes. I respect my people. It is impossible that I would do anything that is not acceptable to my people.
Once again, we are reminded of the fine line the king must walk. Surveys show that the Saudi people do want more rights for women, including the right to drive. The fact that Abdullah is opening the door to women driving in the future is an act of political courage in Saudi Arabia, where the repression of women is taken for granted. Without a man's permission, even that of an eight-year-old brother, women here are not allowed to travel, go to university, or even have life-saving surgery. In public, single men and women are kept totally segregated. I will not be comfortable sitting yeah, here. Uh, even in Starbucks, I am politely told that I am not welcome in the men's section. Your Majesty, there are so many restrictions against women. Do you see this changing? No. Yes, I believe we can. But it will require a little bit of time. Saudi Arabia is the only Arab country in which women do not have the right to vote. Do you foresee that they will be able to vote, perhaps in your next municipal elections? Our people are just now beginning to open up to the world. And I believe that with the passing of days, in the future, everything is possible. Everything is possible, and you think American television may influence that from what you saw? Oh, I do. As you saw, the king has 34 television sets just in his own palace, and even though satellites are forbidden, so many of the people have it, and so many of the people speak English. They recognize me, even with a... Covered up. Yeah, they would recognize you. They watch 2020. Maybe we can make a difference. The King also talked about the Iraq War, the September 11th terrorists, and the problem of extremism. And you can hear all about that later tonight when Barbara hosts Nightline. We'll be right back. Coming up on KB Local News at 11, the city of Richland has found ways to save at the pump. How city workers have cut fuel use by close to 10% and a cheaper alternative for a trip to Seattle or Portland. We'll show you how Horizon Airlines' newest deals are working. We'll see you here in just a few minutes. This has been a family business for five generations. I learned a lot from my father over the years. Listening is a very important part of running a family business. You listen, draw your inspiration from the consumer. Make certain we have products the consumer can see the difference in. To make our products better, we have to listen to people who buy off or Ziploc or all of our products. Listening, that's how we come out with better products. SC Johnson, a family company. Here's me when my sinuses act up. Pain, pressure, meat, sinus boy. I need DayQuil Sinus, the daytime non-drowsy sinus relief. Ah, that's better. DayQuil Sinus, my hero. Introducing a new alternative. Our healing plant therapies and anti-aging science unite to reduce the look of wrinkles and help restore the look of youthful contours. So order a new alternative, our most intensive age treatment yet. Whoa, chocolate yo play. Mm -hmm. This is like zen wrapped in karma, dipped in chocolate. Good. Soaking in a chocolate bed. Good. <laughs> no, a head to toe chocolate body wrap. Good. Mm. Getting a foot massage while shoe shopping. For chocolate covered heels. Good. Of course. <laughs> Introducing Yo Play's oh so indulgent chocolate mousse whips. It is so good. This is like dating a masseuse good. <laughs> That's our program for tonight. Thanks for watching. I'm John Stoss. And I'm Elizabeth Vargas. For all of us here at 2020, good night. Eastern 6 Pacific on ABC.
Next on KB Local News at 11. I know it's making history. You know, we're making history and, and bringing another publication to the Tri-Cities. The people have, have are it's something new to talk about. Start the presses. There's a new newspaper in town. Getting out of town just got a little cheaper.